So the first presentation of the event will be Andrea Cipollina from the University of Palermo. He's the coordinator of the Circular Mind project, and he's going to give you a 10 minute overview of what the project is all about and what activities we've been working on for the past two years. Then Fabrizio Vicari, the innovation manager of the company Resources, a company from Palermo that is focusing on the integrated cycle of, of the uh, of, of seawater is going to talk about the economic potential of beaten valorization. Then we're going to have question and answers. And then, as I said, we're going to have two questions on, on exploiting the uh, possibility of integrating desalination in solar salt works. So first, we're going to hear from Giacomo, from the CEO of SoSalt, who's going to talk about the SoSalt experience. Some years ago, they did uh, test this integration. And after that, we're going to move to Delia Pastorelli, the Desalination Discipline Manager of Suez, who are partners in the project and did a study analyzing the options of integrating desalination and uh, doing a, a pre-feasibility of the process. And then again, we're going to have questions and answers for another 20 minutes. So we have plenty of time for questions and answers. As Tara said, we're asking you during the presentations to have your cameras off and your microphones muted and post your questions as we go. So you can start already now, if you have any questions, post them on the chat window. And we have time to deal with them. So we'll try one by one to take questions from the chat window and deal with them as fast as we can. Now, when the process starts, we might see how the time is going and how many questions. Ask you also to come on if you have uh, unmute if you want to continue the discussion on one question, if possible. But for now, I would say post them on the chat, if that is easy. Um, yeah, and that's what I had as a presentation. So uh, I would say you can start posting if you have already some kind of question. But I would say, Andrea, in the meantime, you can share your screen if you want for your project overview presentation. Yes, sure. Can you see the screen, Michael? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. Okay, so you're on. So I'll start. Okay. Can you hear well? Yes, absolutely. That's perfect. Okay. So good morning. Good morning, everybody. And thank you very much for attending our event. I hope you will enjoy the presentations and the, moreover, I hope we will have a nice and fruitful discussion after each talk. So I, I will open the meeting by introducing our project, but I will keep it short. Uh, and to start, I must say that the circular mind idea uh, is based on the um, process of saltworks. The saltworks, which are places where sea salt is produced starting from seawater, thanks to the effect of sun and wind. But the, there is a byproduct in the saltworks process, which is the bitter, uh, ultra concentrated brine containing uh, sodium chloride, of course, but also a number of other elements which are very concentrated, up to 30, 40 times more concentrated than seawater. And many of these elements are actually among the critical raw materials, so that our goal has been to develop an idea concept which is based on the full circularity concept and processing of the beat and resources in order to recover these elements. Now, some main facts about the project. It is a um, research and innovation action with a budget of all, almost six millions, a duration of four years, coordinated by the University of Palermo with a very rich consortium made of 12 partners plus one third party from nine different countries all around the Mediterranean uh, region and, and Europe. And what is nice to see is also the heterogeneous nature of the partners because they are from uh, academia, uh, research institutes, small medium enterprises, but also big industry so that we also have a nice and, and, and strong industrial driver in our consortium. And now let's see 
how the circular mine concept works. As I said, we start from saltworks. Saltworks, where thanks to the natural evaporation, sea salt is produced starting from seawater. But also a very rich beater is generated, rich in a number of elements. First of all, magnesium, but also lithium and many other trace elements. Our idea is to recover such elements thanks to a fully circular scheme where we selectively separate first magnesium, then lithium, then the other trace elements. But what makes the, the idea really fully circular is also that with the exhausted brine still containing a lot of sodium chloride, we can generate the reactants that are needed for the selective separation steps. So we have the in situ generation of reactants. And that's not the end because at the end of the cycle, we also have uh, the possibility to valorize the remaining sodium chloride brine thanks to a salinity gradient power unit, namely a reversal electrodialysis uh, unit, which enables us to generate some green energy from the salinity gradient left over. At that point, we can either dispose the low concentration brine remaining to the sea or recirculate it to the saltworks. And last but not least, I want to mention that we have also considered the possibility of an upwind integration with desalination um, in order to have a, a desalination unit generated fresh water, but also a concentrated brine to be fed to the saltworks, thus enhancing the sea salt production, but also the overall process, integrated process production. Based on, on that scheme, I want to mention the technical objectives that we have. And starting from the three core technologies for the selective separation of elements, the first one is the unit for magnesium extraction. We are developing a magnesium crystals granulometry controlled reactor, which enables us to separate magnesium in the form of magnesium hydroxide, targeting high purities and a controlled granulometry. The second step is the separation of lithium in a lithium membrane flow capacity ionization. In this case, the process is based on the use of lithium selective membranes, which enables the separation uh, of lithium from the um, lithium rich brine coming from the previous step into a receiver solution, which will become rich lithium enriched stream. And also the use of ca uh, flowing capacitive um, carbon slurry used as electrodes will uh, uh, basically optimize and enhance the performances of this unit. The third core technology is the trace elements pH swing adsorption, which is based on the well-known concept of sorption desorption. But in this case, we are going to use highly selective sorbent material with selectivities which are surprisingly high above 1000, so that we are able to extract in a selective way trace elements such as strontium, rubidium, germanium, and then release them in a recovered solution by means of a pH swing step. But that's, that's not all, because we also need a number of auxiliary technologies to be adapted in order to actually integrate the processes and close the loop. And among these, the main ones are the evaporative pre-concentrator crystallizer, which will treat the brine, magnesium-free brine exiting from the magnesium crystallizer in order to further concentrate the, the stream before sending it to lithium and trace elements recovery. The membrane-based post-concentration unit, which aims at concentrating the lithium and trace element enriched streams produced in the second and third step of our treatment chain, and then the two electromembrane processes. The first one, electrodialysis with bipolar membranes for the in situ production of chemicals used for the selective separation steps. And the second one is reverse electrodialysis for power generation from salinity gradients. And I mentioned all the objectives, and this is just a, a list which is worth scro scrolling, especially because we, um, I didn't mention among the technical objectives, the analysis that we are performing and that will be 
uh, actually discussed in, in depth on the upstream integration with desalination for freshwater production and saltworks productivity enhancement. This will actually mitigate uh, freshwater scarcity issues that always affect the areas where saltworks are installed and operated, and this will be better detailed in the next presentations. But we also have some non-technical objectives, which are basically focused on the characterization and mapping of bittern availability in Europe, but in the whole, I would say, in the whole Mediterranean basin. So we have been collecting bittern samples and analyze them in order to collect information for the um, potentials analysis of our technology. The implementation plan divides the project in three phases. The first one is on fundamental research. The second one is on advanced research. And the third one is on the implementation of the integrated prototype. We have completed the fundamental research phase in which we have collected um, a huge amount of fundamental information, which has been the base to start for the second phase on advanced research, in which we are now developing, so designing and constructing the first generation prototype units that will be tested with synthetic and real solutions in order to prepare every single unit for the final integration of the integrated prototype that will be installed, commissioned, and operated at the premises of the University of Palermo and tested with real bitterns from Trapani Saltworks. Of course, in parallel, we will also work, we have been working on environmental, economic, ecological, and market assessment, and also on communication, dissemination, uh, and tra knowledge transfer activities. I would say expected results are quite clear. I want to highlight the sus securing sustainable access to magnesium, lithium, and other trace elements within EU, but also outside EU. And on, on, on the other side, creating a technology base for radical innovations to unlock substantial reserves of unexploded resources within EU. And uh, last but not least, mitigate freshwater scarcity at low cost with the upstream integration of desalination with saltworks in areas where freshwater scarcity is always an issue. And I will end with our motto, harnessing our seas as a sustainable mineral resource, creating a circular approach to mineral extraction. With that, I would like to thank you all, and uh, I would leave the floor to our presenters. Thank you, Andrea. That was excellent. So um, as, as I said earlier, uh, welcome to the people who have joined in the meantime. I'd welcome uh, everyone to share your questions in the chat. So if you can be posting your questions in the chat as we go, we'll move now to the presentation, the next one by Fabrizio. And uh, we'll take after that, we have 20 minutes scheduled for questions and answers. So there's plenty of time <clears throat> and uh, please post your questions. Um, Fabrizio, do you want to share your screen with uh, your presentation? Yes, of course. So well, good morning to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Fabrizio Vicari, the Innovation Manager of Research Seas, which is a small company with uh, huge ambitions in the field of bittern and brine valorization, both in terms of uh, mineral extraction, but also energy. And today, I'd like to introduce you our point of view in relation to the subject matter of bitter valorization in the framework of the Circular Mind project. So uh, we are going to have three main sections, one devoted to the theme of critical raw materials. Then we are going to see uh, the activities, some of the activities that we have done in the framework of this project. And then uh, when you will see uh, something about a sustainable business model, that means that we are almost over, so you can take a breath because we're finishing. So first of all, let me talk about something that I know better, which is magnesium. And uh, in this map, you can see the situation of uh, uh, magnesium production and steel production in Europe uh, in the early 80s. 
as it was drawn by the Agency for International Development uh, of the USA. As you can see, we were full of industrial plants developing and producing magnesium and steel, and we were observed as a benchmark market from the other countries for our strength. But in the very same report, you can see that there was some concern about uh, a sleeping giant uh, that would be awakened sooner than we think. And that was the People's Republic of China. And indeed, there was uh, already a quite good potential for the extraction of minerals that was unexploited. And uh, in a couple of uh, years, we know, everyone knows how the story ended. So if we look at the situation today, we can see that uh, in terms of magnesia trade, we, our world is divided basically in two pieces. There is uh, one productive section and uh, another consuming section. And this is because most of uh, the mines are located in one part of uh, the world, but also because uh, the labor cost and the energy cost is inferior uh, in the Eastern world when compared uh, to the Western one. And uh, this uh, uh, specific uh, scenario gave the opportunity to these countries to reduce the global production cost and the market uh, uh, price. So we can see here that for more than 20 years, the price of elements the, deriving from magnesium, such as magnesium metal, was kept very low to about 2,000 euros per ton. And that was true up to September 21. And you can see already here that there was something going on in September 21, when the, a small red butterfly started flying around this market. And uh, in a couple of days, the market price rose of about uh, one order of magnitude. That small butterfly was connected to the announcement that uh, the rules regulating uh, the emissions of CO2 and uh, the energy use in China uh, were going to be more tough. Uh, and the punishment for those industries failing in achieving the targets that we were asking by many years to China uh, were underwent uh, to severe consequences. So, uh, the lesson probably here is uh, pay attention to what you desire, because this is what we've been asking to China for a long time. And uh, what we have seen in Europe is that uh, uh, the magnesium dependent industry uh, stopped or slowed down their production. Uh, there was a, a, a crisis shaking the fundamentals of uh, our industries. And uh, all those associations that used to work separately, jointly, called uh, the European Commission to take urgent actions to oppose some limitation to this crisis, because they, they were afraid uh, of this shortage to be forced to stop their business and to lose thousands of jobs. And we are still uh, paying uh, this debt up to these days. And this is the real meaning for me of critical raw materials. Critical raw materials are those elements listed here from which we depend so strictly that their lack or even uh, the threat of the increase of their price can pose uh, our geopolitical stability uh, in doubt. Uh, our system of production and well-being uh, can shake because of some small events on the other side of the world. Magnesium is just the first one in terms of supply risk in this list, uh, but you can see that the list is not short. And uh, these elements are essential for our uh, lifestyle because we use it daily in batteries, fuel cells, photovoltaic panels, but most of all so in information and communication technologies. For this reason, the research on how to get critical raw materials uh, in uh, the last few years rose with the number of publications going up very fast. And most of these publications were devoted to the extraction 
of these critical raw materials from seawater and seawater derived brines. Because as we can see in this table representing the composition of typical seawater, every single element in this list uh, is contained in seawater. And of course, uh, we are surrounded in Europe that seawater, but we are not able uh, up to this moment to extract these elements, mostly because they are containing very tiny amount. But they are all there, starting from uh, magnesium, which is the most concentrated, going to the less uh, afnium uh, there at the bottom of the list. Uh, if we have a little segmentation of uh, these uh, publications in the terms of critical raw material extraction, we can see that uh, the most of them are related to seawater brines. Then we have seawater treatment and desalination brine uh, treatment. But we should never forget that when we treat seawater or desalination brines, uh, what we will have is uh, a total dissolved solid content. Uh, which is mostly uh, composed by sodium chloride. More than 90% of total dissolved solid are sodium chloride. Then we have magnesium, calcium, and so on, but the trace elements are there, of course. So if we have a look, a very rough uh, and approximated look to the global desalination capacity, we can estimate by making some assumption that if we want to extract critical raw materials from the salination brines, we should also take to, into account the extraction of 2.25 megatons of sodium chloride per day. This means that we will end up at the end of the year with about one gigaton uh, of sodium chloride, which is uh, larger than the actual. Uh, global uh, sodium chloride production. And if we want to have it just a term of comparison, that means 0.3 kilograms of sodium chloride per person per day in the world. So my humble opinion is that probably we cannot go for circular with every uh, desalination brine. Of course, there are niche markets in which this can be applied successfully and it is worth doing. And probably the integration that we are going to see later on today are those cases. Uh, but then going back to the publication in uh, the field of uh, critical raw materials extraction, I'd like to draw your attention to that uh, very low line uh, related to the extraction of uh, these materials from bitters, which is today's topic. What is bitter? Once again, as already Andreas clearly uh, stated, bitter are the leftover brines after sodium chloride harvesting. And most of you already know that because I've seen a lot of friends coming from Saltworks today, uh, but uh, they probably used to call this as aqua mother. I found that this name is diffused all over the world. So our idea is instead of finding a new market for an old product, we should try to find new products in these old Southworks market. And this is the idea of the circular mine concept, in which after the uh, sea salt creation in uh, Southworks, we take this mineral rich bitter and extract new products to deliver uh, to the market. And uh, to make that uh, a real study and a proper assessment, we needed data information about the composition of uh, the bitter that we can expect all over uh, the Mediterranean area. So we have created a network of Southworks, and I'd like to thank all the partners that are here today, uh, spanning from Portugal to Croatia to Tunisia, going to France, that participated in our sampling campaign. And most of all, of course, our consortium partner, SOSALT, who allowed us to sample uh, their bittern all over the last sea salt harvesting season. So we could understand also the variability of this resource in time. But then analyzing uh, the bittern from all the other partners in our network that you can see uh, represented here in these pictures, uh, during uh, the collection of the samples or participating to our uh, social media campaign, 
And if you didn't, please subscribe to our social media networks. So analyzing their samples, uh, we understand better what is bitter. Uh, in terms of major elements that you can see here, and uh, there are small deviation actually in terms of major elements. They almost perform the same, even if they come from different feeds. Uh, we can see here feeds coming from seawater or salt lake or ocean, river and subsoils. And in terms of major elements, they are almost every uh, in the same level. But then if we go already to the minor elements, we saw a higher degree of variability, uh, both uh, uh, in terms, as an example, of uh, uh, interest elements such as uh, boron and lithium, or less interesting elements such as calcium. Then the real interesting part is that devoted to the trace element uh, characterizations. We can see that uh, even if they come from seawater, the same seawater, the different operation accomplished in the different salt uh, produce different concentration of trace elements, which are of interest because they belong to the list of critical raw materials as gallium, for example, or germanium and cesium. So uh, having in mind that uh, we want to produce these elements in the saltworks where the term of comparison is uh, the ton of uh, table salt produced, we can uh, see how potentially assuming uh, unitary efficiencies, we could produce uh, uh, a couple of kilograms of minor elements uh, altogether there in uh, the left hand of this slide or some grams of trace elements uh, per ton of uh, sea salt produced. But once again, uh, this is related to specific production, but uh, thank to you again, to the people from Saltworks, we were capable to understand also better the amount of bittern uh, that it is produced in uh, the Mediterranean area. We have launched uh, this survey that you can see here on the right. Uh, and uh, if you didn't reply, please go ahead and reply to it now because we have launched the second version, which is shorter and faster than the first version. Um, so thanks to this survey, uh, we're collecting the information about the amount of bitter, which is about 10 uh, mega cubic meter per year only in the Mediterranean area. So if we combine this information with uh, the compositional characterization of the big terms, we can expect to produce uh, uh, this amount of minor and trace elements. So 1,000 tons of minor elements, including boron and lithium in the Mediterranean area, and a, a couple of tons of trace elements. Uh, but if we want to project these numbers, ideally, to a global uh, production, we can see how we have a two orders of magnitude increase in both uh, graphs uh, going up to uh, 20 tons uh, per year of cobalt of gallium. Probably the people from Southworks believe these numbers are extremely low and it is not worth doing. But what we should consider now is the size of the actual uh, market of these elements. We can see how globally uh, in 2019, the production of gallium was uh, around 300 tons per year. So we can compare the amount of gallium that can be extracted from saltworks from salt with the actual number that is needed from the market. And this is interesting for the price of the gallium itself, which is quite high, but also for the geopolitical situation that we have nowadays. Because among five producers, two in this moment uh, are in the situation that everybody knows in this moment. So there is a, a monopoly risk, and this is a very dangerous risk because, as an example, gallium is used to produce lead, the lighting device that everyone uses in their home houses, uh, but also to produce uh, radio frequencies device that we call Wi-Fi networks uh, to huge markets which grow at a very 
interesting rate. They are already very big. So we should ask ourselves, not if only if it is economically attractive to do it, but also if we need to do it uh, in order to prevent some risk drag from some butterfly going there. So as you've seen, we want to increase the productivity of existing saltworks by producing new products in this old market. But there is also an additional potential of uh, our approach because by extracting all those elements, we will end up with a solution which is purified and composed mainly of uh, sodium chloride. So if we imagine to recirculate this solution back to the southwards, we can see how we have the potential to rise the purity of uh, the table salt produced. So we are gonna finish very soon. We are now at the moment in we state uh, our business model, which is based on uh, uh, the fact that we believe we can rely on a renewable liquid mine for the production of those elements from which we depend. And then we can sell these products as a commodity to the market. The way in which we want to capture this value is by diver diversifying the productivity of uh, the Southworks, making a job of re-innovation. So renovating by applying innovation strategies. And finally, uh, this is what we are doing in the framework of the Circular Mind project, we are creating value. We are creating sustainability, which means both environmental sustainability, but also economic sustainability. We have to compete on the market at the end. So our production cycle has to be cheaper than the actual production cycle. And to do that, we are developing these new technologies. We are now at uh, the, the second year of development, in two years, uh, the Circular Mine project is going to be finished. And at the moment, we are extremely encouraged by the European Commission to use those results, to use the innovation that we have created by exploitation actions. And this entangles uh, the licensing of uh, our intellectual properties, the creation of joint venture as spin-off company in order to go to the market with these products. And uh, this is what we will do. And if you're interested in doing it, please send me an email and we start to discuss about it. And you can also make some questions now that the presentation is over. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabrizio. So if I could ask now all uh, presenters, I think Andrea, but also maybe Delia and Giacomo, who will present later on. But since we have now 20 minutes for discussion and, and uh, uh, we don't have any questions on the chat yet, we had one which Andrea answered already on the chat. But maybe, Andrea, if I may ask you to explain what was the question and the answer you gave, just for everyone to follow. Yes. Yes. So first of all, greetings to Baldo. <laughs> he was with us a few years ago. Um, now, Baldo has asked how much energy we can recover from the bitter. And the answer, uh, I mean, the, the, the fastest answer, the quick answer is, uh, in principle, a bitter, a saturated bitter can produce, can allow to produce from two to four kilowatt hour every cubic meter of bitter generated and treated. Uh, the truth is that the amount of energy that we will be able to produce will depend on the actual, actual concentration, but also on the composition of the bitter. With that respect, our concept uh, has a winning feature because one of the main drawback of using ultra concentrated brine for the uh, energy generation with salinity gradients is that the presence of bivalent cations can hinder the production, can uh, dramatically reduce and affect the performances of reverse electrolysis units by a factor which is even 50 or 60 percent. In our case, our idea is to apply reverse electrolysis after the removal of magnesium so that we have a basically magnesium and calcium free 
brine, still containing basically all the sodium chloride that we had initially. Apart, I mean, uh, the, the, you do consider that the amount of sodium chloride which is used for the in situ generation of chemicals basically remains in the cycle as uh, it, it is part of a closed loop system. And that will allow us to uh, maximize the potential for energy generation. Uh, one thing that we have not mentioned, it, but it's also, I mean, uh, um, an important feature of our process is that we are not planning to use only energy from salinity gradients, but also energy from renewable energy sources. And one of the targets in the activities in the second and especially in the third phase of the project is to analyze how the, say, the most energy intensive steps of our separation chain will deal with a variable power supply so that we, we, can, we will assess how much, for example, electrodialysis with bipolar membranes or reverse electrodialysis can be used as a mean to passively or actively buffer the variable energy availability from renewable energy sources. Okay, so um, thank you, Andrea. So maybe then a, a question is that um, there is a lot here. So you've been talking about um, different technologies to extract magnesium, to extract lithium, to extract other trace elements. Then it gets complicated as well with taking the brine, recovering the reactants. There are a lot of technologies there. Then you're talking about taking energy out of that. So as we have here in the audience, a lot of solar salt works. First of all, there are many questions I assume will be going through their minds because they haven't uh, asked anything. But if I was a salt work owner, first of all, how realistic is all that? Are you just dreaming, talking about potentials? You're professors in the university. You're thinking about different options, doing research. But can that really work? Can you on the ground? in these beautiful sites, go and install all these technologies, will you turn it into a, an industrial zone? And uh, will they work efficiently and effectively? Can you really extract this? Sounds very complicated. So do you have any- Okay, so may maybe I start answering, but I, I think uh, Giacomo may, may give a better answer. Um, Basically, what happens in saltworks, where sea salt is produced, is that saltworks, which are protected areas, natural reserves, very often, uh, they also have like a, a, an industrial area where the sea salt is treated, processed, packed, and then distributed. So we don't see, a, a, let's say, a, a big boundary, a big limitation in the fact that saltworks are natural reserves, as, as we are not planning to interfere with the normal saltworks operation. But at the contrary, we are planning to take a waste stream, a byproduct of the sea salt production process, and treat it in a separate location, which will be near the saltworks, but potentially it will be located where the uh, sea salt processing uh, factory is located. And I don't know, Giacomo, would you like to give some, some additional? I was trying to, to uh, can you hear me now? Yes. So, uh, so the point is that uh, the, the bit uh, that uh, is used in the circular mine uh, uh, project is uh, uh, essentially uh, taken out when you have already harvested the, 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 the sodium chloride, the salt. I mean. So it's uh, uh, relatively irrelevant which technology you use to make the, uh, the, the salt extraction. Uh, the relevant- oh, Sorry, the uh, Giacomo, sorry. You are answering the question by- uh, Brogan. Brogan now. Okay, okay. Brogan asks, what technology does the salt extraction um, from the brine use and how does it work? It's, it's the, the, the traditional technology. I mean, 
it, it is done in, industrially with uh, machine uh, uh, extraction and uh, and then you have the you, you have to take out the bitten uh, when you uh, 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 and uh, when you make the extraction of the of the sodium chloride and then you use this bitten then the, the, the technology used for the for the salt extraction is it's a traditional one. I mean, it can be, it is done with excavators or with uh, uh, other machines, or in very few cases. And for example, for us in Trapan, in a very few percentage, I mean, two to three percent, is done still in the, tra the traditional by uh, by uh, traditional by hand. But this is relatively relevant. What is important is that you have. Uh, so to, you have the, the bitten, I mean, the, 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 the really the brine, uh, uh, which comes out, which is left after the uh, uh, concentration, up to the saturation point, after the extraction, you have, you take out this, uh, this uh, bitten that we call aqua madre, as, as Fabrizio was saying, and then you use this sort of, 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 of brine, of super concentrated brine to process it and extract the other valuable material, the critical materials, as Fabrizio was, was explaining. I, I, I hope I have, I've answered your, your question. Yeah, I, I do think that uh, possibly uh, Borgan was, what he meant to ask was when he says uh, salt extraction, also the magnesium, lithium and so on, so this is uh, more on the detail. Uh, Andrea gave some indications. We don't go into this event into the detail of the technologies for each step of the process, but uh, that is fine, I think, for now. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Giacomo. So Nacho also sent uh, a question. Yes, yeah. Fabrizio. Maybe you. I can try to answer to Nacho. First of all, thank you, Nacho, for attending and participating actively in our meeting. So. Um, sea mining, of course, is studied in China, especially in those... Uh, Fabri, Fabri, maybe you, you read the question first. Yes. So that's... So Nacho is saying, ciao Andrea Fabrizio, is sea mining being studied, applied in China, or are they currently relying on land mines for many years to come? So are they trying to switch to sea mining or not? What we have seen is that indeed there is a lot of research there, uh, especially in uh, those centers located nearby in Singapore and so on. Uh, but uh, from my experience about uh, the market, again, what I know better is uh, the magnesium market. We can say how they are trying to make more efficient the traditional way of producing uh, magnesium metal. Uh, as an example, they still apply the pigeon process to produce uh, magnesium metal. But in this case, they are uh, reducing a lot the amount of coal used for the process. So they are uh, making their traditional way of production more efficient, but still relying on uh, mineral sources. Of course, there might be some uh, other uh, application related to the other critical raw materials, which I still don't know, but that is my background. Thank you. What I do find interesting, of course, we cannot we can keep an eye what is happening in the rest of the world but of course we we have to assume what we do others can do as well it, it does happen outside europe and it will happen uh, but i think what is interesting is how fabrizio you started your presentation it is not that long ago at least for me i do remember the 1980s so we had so much magnesium production in europe it totally totally closed everything down but now in 2022, we still have living memory of that. So it's better to start and go back again before it's too late. And even if others do as well, we can then try to compete on equal footing. A lot has changed in the world. So it's good as we see now for strategic purposes to keep production in Europe, to keep generation in Europe, use our raw materials, use our resources that we have, even if it's the, our natural resources. Um, so, any other questions? Maybe I can comment on you while people 
try to make questions. No, don't be afraid. We are here all friendly, ready to answer to your questions. So uh, it is true, there is still the people that used to work in those industrial facility and ready to get back to work. Uh, but it is also true that the innovation is made on uh, different levels. We are innovation creators. Then we should try to connect to innovation enables. So people that can enable uh, the real implementation of what we are trying to create. People from uh, uh, the policymaker sector uh, or uh, the giant industrial sector. So people that can help in uh, overcoming uh, the difficulties that we can met uh, in uh, going to the market. One thing that I can think about it is uh, um, the use of subsidies, you know, to push uh, the market of uh, solar photovoltaic uh, panels. At the beginning, there were a, a lot of subsidies uh, in order to decrease the price of solar photovoltaic uh, panels. Then, uh, naturally, uh, the prices went down. So we imagine that in order to apply these innovation, which are capital expensive, in order to construct what we want, we need a lot of capital, but probably uh, subsidies from uh, European Commission or local uh, decision-making entities that might facilitate uh, innovation in this field. And maybe we can ask also Ahmed from uh, ENIC in Tunisia. Ahmed, if you would like to turn on your camera and uh, tell us a little bit, because we've been discussing here about Europe and local production in Europe. Tunisia is uh, very close and your great friends. And uh, from your interaction with the Saltworks there, do you see there is interest in, in activities like that and in innovation to, to work from uh, with the resources that you have in the, in the salt works to apply technologies like the ones developed here. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Thanks uh, to everybody. Nice presentations. Uh, yes, uh, um, I see, uh, well, uh, some uh, interest on uh, resources uh, resources exploitation and uh, uh, these mineral resources and Britain also are uh, huge resources for several elements as explained by Fabrizio and uh, already we are exploiting some magnesium for example we have in the south uh, uh, a company that produces uh, magnesium sulfate but also I see some interest of other salt works on magnesium exploitation, magnesium extraction, and um, this probably for the time being is limited to magnesium, but they are not looking further to trace elements. Probably we have among us uh, uh, Amduni, um, Mr. Rida Amduni, he He's the director of, he was a director, he just retired. He was a director of um, Cotizal in, uh, in Sfax, which is the second biggest uh, uh, salt production uh, 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 unit, uh, which belongs to the Group Salin as well. Probably, uh, uh, see, Mr. Luida, can you, can you, uh, can he uh, can he speak, uh, yeah, Mike, if he wants? Yeah, sure. Silida, uh, do you understand me, Silida? Can you talk a little bit of the interest of uh, Cotizat, for example, or from your experience? Silida. Yes. Yes, oui. Lida, we can hear you. Nes on, on vous entend parfaitement. Voilà. Ben, je, euh, euh, enfin, je vais parler en français, c'est bon. OK. Most, most of the attendees will understand. I, I see Michael is uh, a bit smiling. <laughs> well, we can translate. 
Yes, we yes. can translate it. We have five we more have... minutes, so then we'll, yes, we'll move on, but absolutely, yes. Okay, uh, bonjour à tous. Uh, je me présente, je suis Amdoun Ineza, un géochimiste, docteur géochimiste, que j'ai travaillé sur les eaux salées, spécialement, surtout sur les sommets urbanisiennes. Uh, j'ai préparé mon diplôme de doctorat de géochimiste à Paris. Et j'ai travaillé sur les salins de Tunisie, en particulier sur le salin de Sfax. Donc, j'ai déjà des articles sur le, les sommets humanisiens. Euh, en parallèle, enfin, j'ai commencé à travailler, j'ai fait toute mon carrière euh, sur, euh, au niveau des salins, en management des salins. En tant qu'aussi responsable laboratoire, j'ai adapté des méthodes d'analyse euh, adaptées pour, euh, pour ces eaux salées, qui sont des, des, vraiment des milieux très complexes. Et on a produit aussi dans le salon, on produit des saumures magnésiennes très concentrées au magnésium qui dépassent les 110 grammes par litre. Euh, J'ai travaillé aussi euh, en tant que recherche scientifique sur le lithium, sur les bromures et sur le strontium. Donc, ces trois éléments sont bien identifiés à quel niveau de, de processus évaporitique, à quel niveau euh, ils atteignent leur con, concentration maximale. Euh, voilà, donc, oui. Uh, Michael, Michael, shall we translate or? If you, if you would like to have a, a minute. Well, of, of he, he, he yeah. was, um, uh, our colleague, um, Mr. Amdouni, he was referring to his experience uh, in uh, salt works um, exploitation. And uh, what we would be more interested in is in the future. In the future, do you think uh, for, um, do you think using these uh, raw, raw uh, um, bitterns, uh, are they realistic? Are they valuable resources for these trace elements? What do you think? Uh, from the uh, from the prospect of uh, group salin. Mm -hmm. See, si, I'm doing it. Oui. Est-ce qu'il y a un potentiel pour euh, éventuellement l'exploitation de des saumures mères pour l'extraction d'éléments autres que le magnésium? Oui, oui. Bien entendu, le magnésium est identifié. Oui, oui. Il y a, il y a, il y a quelques utilisations. Nous avons utilisé déjà et adapté l'utilisation des saumures à l'état brut pour la granulation de phosphate. Et là, c'est un projet réussi, on l'a appliqué en Tunisie, c'est-à-dire les saumures, on ajoute de la chaux, et pour former ce qu'on appelle un sel oxychlorure, c'est un ciment, ce qui nous a permis de, de, de l'utiliser pour protéger le, le, les grains de phosphate contre la reprise de l'humidité. Donc ça, c'est l'oxychlorure qui se forme en présence de, de la chaux, et du, de, des saumures magnésiennes, parce que ces saumures contiennent des, clo, des, clo, des chlorures, contiennent du MG, contiennent un peu de sulfate, donc un peu de potassium, très peu de sodium. Donc c'est l'état final, plus les saumures sont concentrées, plus ils sont efficaces pour être utilisés dans la granulation du phosphate. Ils sont utilisés aussi en Tunisie pour les, abra, pour les abrasifs, l'industrie abrasive, euh, comme des additifs. Euh, donc, euh, sont, mais aller jusqu'à l'extraction élémentaire, c'est-à-dire du magnésium, par exemple, ou du lithium ou, des, ou du, du brom, non, pas encore. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'y avait pas d'essai euh, sérieux pour, c'est-à-dire des essais sérieux pour atteindre, pour aboutir à une extraction des îles élémentaires. Hein. Mais c'est très important, surtout notamment ce qu'on a comme soumir en Tunisie, ce sont des soumir hautement concentrés. Et, et on a identifié, notamment au niveau des, des marais salants, là où on atteint les concentrations maximales, notamment pour le lithium, le strontium, le rubidium, le lithium et les bromures. Donc, euh, sont bien identifiés au niveau du circuit euh, euh, des tables salantes. Donc, reste peut-être à engager des essais au niveau des laboratoires pour, pour, pour pouvoir... Euh, en partant avec des saumures euh, hautement concentrées pour pouvoir euh, passer à l'extraction alimentaire. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. So, I, I would say, because it's 10 o'clock, uh, 
first of all, I want to comment that um, in the 1980s, it wasn't just more magnesium plants in Europe. I would say much larger percentage of the population could speak and understand French back then than now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's see if it's all changing again, also in this respect. But uh, I think the conclusion from this first uh, hour of our event before we move to the second hour is that the bitter coming out of salt works all around the world, but we have focused looking at the Mediterranean Sea mostly or in Europe, um, contains a lot of potentially viable materials. The, 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 the breadth of materials, so that many different materials, many of them are in the critical raw material list, or if we look at it the other way around, as Fabrizio did, if you do take the critical raw material list, practically all of them are in seawater. Some are in very small concentrations, some in larger concentrations. But what Fabrizio pointed out is that small concentration alone is not a reason to ignore some materials because the total global markets are small in terms of mass, but valuable. So they could have very important applications and high prices, some of them. So we shouldn't necessarily ignore them. It does make it more difficult to extract and purify if they're in very small quantities, but it's worth exploring. Now, all of this is not straightforward. That's why it's not already happening. And because there is risk involved and a lot of effort, that's why the European Commission has supported us, is giving us a subsidy to, to work on developing the technologies. So as Andrea explained, we have put together a group of 12 leading experts, companies, research institutes, together with an external party, so we're 13 organizations in total working together on developing the concepts, the technologies, and the business models to make this work. So we're reaching out today to, to SaltWorks to start the discussion on how we can work together to make this happen. So this was the first part of the event. Now in the second hour, we focus a little bit more again on SaltWorks, but not so much on the recovery of the minerals, but on integrating the salination to SaltWorks and how this can help increase their productivity. As I explained earlier, we have two presentations. The first one is Giacomo from Sosol, and then we'll move to Delia from Suez. So Giacomo, would you like to start trying to share your screen now so that we can move into your presentation? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so Giacomo will talk to us about his uh, specific experience some years ago. On, on testing this process. So Giacomo, I leave the floor to you. Thank you. Yes, hello everybody again. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm, I will just talk a few minutes about an experience we had in, uh, in Trapani 10 years ago in a collaboration with the University of Palermo. There were a very young Andrea Cipollina working on, on, this, on this project. Uh, so what we tried was to uh, use the uh, brine coming as a, as, a, as a waste, I would say, from the desalination plant, which was in, uh, in, in uh, operating in, in Trapani at that time. Oh, I'm trying to go. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. So, uh, besides the, the reuse and exploitation of brines as a non conventional source of mineral energy, which is the main issue and the main goal of the, of the um, circular project, this is very interesting and it has been uh, studied by, by SOSAL in the past. I know that there are some, some other experiments in the world, uh, in Israel, maybe. One that we were in developed uh, in in uh, Our our project is uh, and the, the general view of the of the integration plant uh, fine with the uh, with the, with the software is twofold. First of all, is the 
reducing the impact of the desalination brine, plant brine disposal, uh, I mean the environmental impact. And the second, uh, which is uh, very important for us who, who are uh, producing seawater, is the improve, uh, improve the performance of sea salt in terms of salt production. And this is the reason for that is quite uh, easy to understand because we use a brine which has a, a, a concentration. So we start with concentration higher than the sea water and it will accelerate and improve the, the, the performance of the sea salt work. And all is done in a way which is totally sustainable and compliant to the frame of circular economy because we, we, we reduce the impact of, the, uh, of, of, of releasing the, the brine uh, 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 from the desalination plant and we uh, use it within, we circulate it to the, to the seaside. We had in uh, Trapani a, a situation which was uh, uh, quite ideal for that, that time. In fact, we had a desalination unit in Trapani uh, and uh, uh, the desalination unit obviously produces fresh water and produces brine. 30% of fresh water, 70% of brine. If you, you, you uh, feed the salt water with this brine, you are able, and this is what uh, we have been able to prove, we can have salt, uh, sodium chloride, with the, all the requirements of a food grade salt. And- <clears throat> Giacomo, I, I'm sorry, just a second. Because your connection seems to be a bit slow and distorts the voice, I would recommend if you turn off your camera or we'll turn off your camera if you don't mind and we can just continue, okay? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks. So then you, what you can do is the, the, the obviously the exhausted brine from the software is used within the secular mine project to for the mineral recovery. And uh, uh, we have we had we tried also, uh, I, I won't talk about that, but we also tried and make made an, an experience for using the the, the saturated brine. Uh, we with the seawater uh, to produce green energy with the real, real power uh, uh, project, but I won't talk about that. So we are in Trapani, I mean in the in the western, in the, I, I would I like to say the far west of Sicily, and uh, uh, we tried. We have a, a, an ideal situation because we had a a, a, a med. Um, desalination plant very, very close to a small salt work, a small traditional artisanal salt work. And we had the possibility to make an, an experience really at zero cost because we, we, we intercepted the, the brine from the desalination plant and we have been feeding the, 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 the salt work. Here you see the position of the salt of the, of the former uh, med TVC plant, the salination plant, and the the, the salt work which is which is uh, adjacent to to it. Uh, the uh, the salt the plant has been working from to, to 1995 to 2014, and uh, it was able to produce fresh water into a, an extent of nine thousand cubic meter, uh, cubic meters per day. Uh, each of the four units. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I will skip the, the 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 details because the 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 desalination plant is now uh, stopped. Uh, so I will I will uh, uh, skip all this part. Uh, will from the evaporation effects you have the uh, uh, brine which comes to the to the to the salt work and. We have we had a, 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 a blowdown, uh, brine blowdown of eighty thousand cubic meters per day at a concentration, and this is most important for the salt production of five, five, uh, 53 to fifty five grams per liters, and this is 
uh, important with, with a relatively high temperature. But the other uh, totally relevant point is the, the, that the uh, chemicals used in the, uh, in the desalination plant are uh, in a very, very uh, low concentration and even more important, all those, all those, uh, these two um, chemicals are approved by the Food and Drug Administration, so are completely compliant with, with the with the with the, uh, alimentary product. The old the old uh, uh, scheme was the traditional scheme was like that. The water is uh, it comes from from sea water from sea and then it produces sea salt after a, a long path within the salt work, and then the saturated brine is recycled. This is, was the traditional old way of producing salt in this very small um, salt work. What we did was to uh, remove the, the, the feed from the sea, and we, we have been feeding the, the the salt work from the brine. This, uh, this, uh, this means a, a, a small change in the in the path of the of the brine to the to the up to the crystallization, but nothing else than this. So, and what we have seen is that we have been passing from a pro main production in the in the previous ten years of uh, about nine thousand uh, nine hundred tons per year to 2,600 tons per year in the four, in the five years, okay, I would say four because we had a, a terrible Mediterranean hurricane in, in 2009 where we had a, a, a very, very small production. <clears throat> so as you can see here, we have 1,890 tons per year in the year 1997 to 2007, and we had, 600 tons per year in the years where we had where we had this experimentation. We were ready with, with a 30% production increase with prevention, 37 uh, 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 dates, and we can uh, uh, potentially estimate a 30% in, in increase in the production. Unfortunately, when we were ready to to to, to the to, from the experimentation to industry use the, the the desalination company was stopped in the region, so the the we stopped our our experimentation. Uh, but the other point where I would like to, to that I would like to stress is that we have been uh, studying also obviously the quality. Of the salt produced uh, by feeding the, the the salt work with the with the through the through the desalination plant, and we can, we could uh, find analyzing the the, the the produced salt that we uh, found no contamination from heavy metals at the same level as we had at the at the in the uh, in the traditional uh, feeding. No sulfates or nit nit nitrites contaminants, and nit nitrites and nitrates at the same level as in the other so salt raw salt samples. Very low calcium content as in so salt samples. The insoluble detected uh, 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 was at 0.1 percent level, which is totally compliant with the with the with the food grade salt. And uh, as a summary in the table, uh, you can see, uh, we, we have compared the uh, Maria Stella, which was the name of the, the small uh, traditional salt work, which is, which were, where we made the experimentation. We found that we would start with, uh, for a raw salt, the same level of sodium, the same uh, uh, title of sodium chloride, at 97, 97.1 against 97.2 percent, 0.41 percent of uh, magnesium against 0.33 in the in the in the general social production, the total industrial social production, and 0.18 potassium content against 0.19. 
all the Codex Alimentarius requirements for food grade salt, which are essentially 97% of sodium chloride, 0.5% uh, insoluble, and heavy metals in the PPB range are well fulfilled in the salt produced and the salt preferred with the brine coming as an output to <coughs> of the Trapani led TVC desalination plant. And this was the most important uh, 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 result. Then what we did uh, together with the, with the um, Istituto di Consorzio Universitario della Provincia di Trapani, I mean the, the Istituto di Biologia Marina, we tried to study the environmental impact of what, of the, of the, of uh, feeding the salt work with the uh, desalination plant waste, I would say. <laughs> and uh, uh, beside the general market connected to the environmental effect, uh, of the exhaust and brine of the desalination plant, and which is the, the corresponding of the brine in the open sea and of, of its impact on the flora, found and the biotic component in the close neighboring of the point. Besides that, which is uh, obvious, we like to see if there is some, if there was some environmental impact on the salt work uh, uh, environment. I mean, Southwark is a very uh, uh, delicate uh, ecosystem uh, uh, from the point of view of the uh, flora and fauna uh, 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 being of being in the in the living in the in the Southwark. Southwark is really a bioreactor, which is a very delicate. Uh, uh, equilibrium, which is preserved by the traditional uh, salt work uh, uh, production and the men uh, uh, preserve the uh, environment. So it is very important that any change we envisage are, is totally compatible with, the, with this bioreactor and with the ecological equilibrium, which is also mm, uh, uh, protected and controlled by several authorities, like, like for example, WWF, which is the, the authority which, which uh, uh, controls the, the behavior of the salt work in the Trapani area. So what we have been uh, studying is the, the test of acute toxicity, the uh, algal growth inhibition test, what we made the test for the algal growth inhibition, the bioluminescence inhibition. We tested all these facts and also the effects on the banker bio community and the uh, results uh, that the, the Instituto di Biologia Marina uh, reached was that the mine biotic community present the saltwork waters and soil is not significantly affected nor undergoes any to any toxic effect when the salt work is fed with the brine released from, from by the desalination plant. This was the first example that convinced us that this is a possibility. Unfortunately, the possibility was over because the desalination plant was stopped in, in, in Trapani. But uh, I think that this uh, uh, study case uh, can be useful for the develop for developing this possibility, both for the uh, uh, desalination plant, uh, uh, which is a, a, a high help, for, as Andrea was saying, for the for the areas where there is a freshwater uh, uh, shortage and for the production of salt, which is our main business, our core business in SoSalt and in many uh, salt work companies, uh, sea salt work companies all over the Mediterranean and also outside Mediterranean. So the conclusion is, is that the, the, the technology is possible, the, exp the exploitation of the salination brands can be a significant resource in, if, in an effective integrated production cycle. An experiment well, uh, uh, has been tested 
which was uh, uh, which achieved the, the possibility to reach a production of 3,000 ton per year in a small sulfur that had uh, 2,000 uh, uh, tons per year in the in the traditional uh, uh, feeding system, which means a, 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 that we can estimate prudentially an increase by about 30 percent by feeding the sulfur with the uh, with the with the desalination plant, uh, uh, the brine coming from the desalination plant. Uh, from the qualitative point of view, we had no significant uh, differences uh, uh, compared to the traditional cycle, and we had also a, a, a totally uh, negligible environmental impact uh, on the on the on the eco ecosystem of the saltwork. And we have a reduction of the impact on, on the on the on the sea because of the re reduction of the of the um, brine released to the sea. And so, uh, some reference. And thank you, thank you very much. And my my, my presentation is uh, is uh, over now. I'm ready to uh, uh, answer if there is any question. Thank you. Thank you, Giacomo. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry for asking you to turn off the camera. You can turn it on again now. Uh, just the voice was breaking up a little bit and I was concerned, but in the end we could hear you very well. Well, I could at least. And that was very clear. So you can stop sharing your screen now. And uh, it was really great to see this innovation from your side. So a, a, a company, Sosort, in the far west, as you say, of <laughs> Italy, uh, so many years ago, so innovative action together with the uh, University of Palermo and great results. So I think that was a great starting point. We will move to the discussion later on, but we'll first have the presentation by Delia. So Delia, if you want to turn on your camera and start sharing your screen, because we've seen this great innovation so many years ago by Sosolt and by the University of Palermo, but now the Circular Mind project is working, has, is, has in the consortium Suez, a leading desalination company, and looked at this concept again with a new lens and taking into account the latest data and information. So we're looking forward to hear what you found out. Okay, thank you, Michael, and thank you, <clears throat> Giacomo, uh, for the first uh, presentation. We can move directly to, to the theoretical approach and the improvement of the desalination integration. Uh, first, I introduce me. Uh, I'm uh, uh, Delia Pastorelli and I work in uh, Suez and I'm in charge of the technical department uh, uh, for the desalination part. Uh, we go back to the, to the circular mine uh, um, model in order to see where we, we show the presentation now, that uh, the integration upstream to the saltworks of the desalination plant uh, have two targets. One is to mitigate the fresh water production, and the other is uh, to valorize the brine, the concentrated brine, and to feed the, the saltworks. As the example that Giacomo showed just, uh, um, just now. Uh, we focus first on the global context in order to see why the, the, the mitigation to produce fresh water is uh, uh, critical today. And uh, after we will go into the detail on uh, which is uh, the best technology of desalination to be introduced in this model. And uh, we will see the results, uh, theoretical results about uh, how we can uh, do better than the, uh, the, um, the real exercise done in uh, Trapani uh, with the improvement in capacity and uh, in uh, footprint. But about the context, uh, this is not new uh, for you. We all uh, know that uh, in terms of uh, global warming, we have a, a huge impact uh, on the water cycle. And uh, it's for this reason that uh, uh, during this program, we work together to find a, a sustainable solution to produce uh, fresh water 
and to be able to face this uh, uh, scarcity in the, in the world. And if we focus on the Mediterranean region, we see that uh, uh, become a, a very critical area, not only the sounds of uh, Mediterranean uh, region, but also in the north of uh, Mediterranean, we can start to have uh, the very increased demand for irrigation. And if we focus on the water uses, that is also interesting to have like a picture before going into the detail on the, on the technical part, uh, it's important to see that uh, almost 70% of the water uses is uh, uh, demand by the irrigation. And if you can see the, the Mediterranean uh, part, uh, this uh, is uh, uh, almost 65%. Uh, the other is uh, uh, domestic and the industrial uses. For this reason, we focus on the desalination integration and why we decided to put the desalination. First, as I told you, and also Andrea uh, emphasized it uh, during the introduction, we would like to introduce this solution to, to have a, a sustainable uh, uh, approach to increase uh, the water security and to have a reliable source of fresh water. And at the same time, in this uh, area that is identified like uh, arid area, we can implement desalination as a proven solution to provide this uh, water. If we focus on the concept, the concept is really positive because it's circular, it's sustainable as a, um, uh, Giacomo also uh, introduced the gradility salient uh, uh, solution and also the renewable energy could be part of this project. And uh, uh, the new approach also is that the brine is not a waste, but we can valorize it to feed the salt works. And not only, because if we speak in terms of globally approach on the water cost, we can have uh, the approach related to the salt works in order to optimize the performances, but also the approach to, to, to have critical raw materials in order to reduce the global cost of water. If we see the scenario and the, the, the market for the desalination, we can see that is a, uh, is a growing market, five, seven percent growing per year. And if we focus on the, um, on the distribution about the kind of, uh, of resource, the seawater represents almost 8% of the, of the market, 20% is by brackish, and the, 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 the thermal disappear from the market due to the reason that I will uh, show now. Because now we focus on which technology is the well adapted for the desalination. In terms of recovery, the RO can uh, apply higher recovery the, the thermal processes. We can uh, reach up to 50% of recovery. This is one of the reasons. The other reason is related to the CAPEX. If we consider the CAPEX, this is the data that uh, is taken from Global Water Intelligence. If we consider a large plant, I mean higher than 200 MLD, we have a capex lower than $1,000 per cubic meter per day of capacity for the aero plant, reverse osmosis plant. And this capex increase a lot for the thermal plant and is higher than $1,700 per cubic meter per day of capacity. And the other reason also is the OPEX. In terms of energy consumption, the reverse osmosis, if we consider a very large panel of uh, uh, seawater, I mean in terms of temperature and uh, TDS, total dissolved salts, we, uh, and we convert in a specific electrical consumption, the reverse osmosis become the more interesting in terms of consumption. And this, if you see in the, in the global uh, cost of uh, the, of the desalination, the electrical part have a weight that can reach 50% uh, in average. It means that it's really important to reduce as much as possible this value. And with the reverse osmosis, this was possible thanks to the membrane progress 
and thanks to energy recovery device also implementation and the high uh, performances that we can all uh, today apply in the pumps, specific in the HV pumps for a row. In terms of chemicals also, in a row, we use uh, very less, very few chemicals. We reduce as much the anti-scalant and uh, the only other chemicals that we have uh, is uh, the coagulants, that is uh, ferric chloride. And uh, if we see what remains in the brine, it remains uh, the same ratio of iron that we can contain uh, in the seawater. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, biological equilibrium, as Giacomo showed, uh, the experience in Trapani was very uh, interesting because uh, they don't measure any impact uh, on the uh, ecosystem. And uh, uh, we have a look also on the crystallization of salts, if there are possible uh, modification on the crystallization step. And uh, with the NIG and uh, the support of resources, we perform a different uh, uh, laboratory test by taking real uh, brine coming from reverse osmosis, from seawater and from thermal plant. And as you can see in the picture, in terms of uh, density and conductivity, we have the, the very similar uh, uh, results. And in terms also of uh, crystallization, we identify three different steps of uh, crystallization in order to, um, to collect single uh, salts the first uh, one to 2.5 is for calcium carbonate, after for calcium sulfate, and on the end for sodium chloride. And uh, we don't see any difference on the crystallization uh, structure. But uh, other tests uh, will go in uh, uh, on site directly on the, on the pilot plant in, uh, in Trapani. If we go now on the in introduction of the um, desalination plant, we have a pretreatment before the reverse osmosis that in the case of Trapani could be a normal dual media filtration. And uh, we produce two, uh, two flow. One is the permeate that is, the, is remineralized before uh, introduce it in the network to distribute to the drinking water network. And the other outlet is the brine, concentrated brine, that uh, in, um, instead of having a, a lower concentration as uh, the seawater, that in this case is 35 gram per liter, can reach 60, uh, 70 gram per liter. And we have a control on the brine in order to see, depending on the operation of the saltworks, we can add all uh, flow of brine into the saltworks or manage a part, only a part of this brine, depending on the production required by the saltworks. This is, a, I go very fast on it. Uh, this is the distribution of the pounds that we have in the saltworks. Our case state of references is uh, Trapani. And uh, uh, we have uh, the pre pre preliminary pounds when the water, the seawater is injected and is clarified and is distributed in the other pounds where started the evaporation up to the evaporative pounds where the water reach the um, NACL saturation point for, uh, for be ready to be distributed in the crystallization pounds where we can collect the NACL. This is the reference case with an inlet of seawater at 35 gram per liter of 65,000 cubic meter per day. And the target is to collect a saturated NACL water at 6,000 uh, 6, cubic meter per day. If we did the theoretical the exercise thanks to uh, the simulation and uh, the real evaporative uh, experiment and uh, results in the saltworks in Trapani, we introduce the brine directly in the preliminary points to see with what is the impact on the productivity of, of the, um, the saltworks. If we introduce the same quantity of brine than the quantity of seawater in the previous example, we are able to increase the saturated NACL water produced 
and it means that we are able to increase the production up to 78% instead of the 30% uh, percent, uh, explained by Giacomo in the real case with the thermal plant, thermal brine. The other exercise that we perform, due to the fact that the brine is already concentrated, we can uh, bypass some pounds in order to introduce directly the brine into driving pounds. By doing this, we can remove the preliminary pounds because the, the brine uh, is already clarified. We don't need to settle this, uh, this part, like in uh, seawater. And we don't need the cold pounds because we have already more than 60 gram per liter of concentration. It means that we are able to reduce by 43% the salt work surface if we, if we would like to maintain the same production that we have today. Now I will show you by, by table all of, of the results that, uh, that we show. The target was to produce um, saturated water to feed the crystallizer. And we did the exercise by how happens if we in, introduce the brine at the beginning or if we introduce the brine in the serving point. This is two approach to see that in the, in the second case, we can increase the, the productivity. And in the third case, we, we stress the impact on the footprint because we reduce the surface by 43%. If we can see uh, now like the, the picture for the peak mounts, because in Trapani, uh, depending on the, on the climate that we have in the specific region. In uh, Trapani, we don't work all the year on the salt works. We have a peak months of production that is uh, usually uh, June, July, and August. And during these peak months, the simulation that we, we done is uh, it was uh, to introduce uh, 60,000 uh, cubic meter per day of brine, the full capacity of the brine in order to, um, to maximize the production. And in this, by this way, we are able to produce also 60,000 uh, cubic meter per day of fresh water to deliver to the drinking water um, end users. To conclude, uh, we can see that uh, the, um, the seawater arrow, for the reason that I explained to you, uh, it was found as the best technology in terms of uh, CAPEX, in terms of OPEX for chemicals and energy consumption, the best technology for disintegration with the saltworks. We perform a pre pre preliminary test in order to see if the crystallization step could be performed with the same performances that with the natural uh, power, uh, evaporation in the, in the pounds from the salt, salt works in Trapani. And uh, this was really successful. Even if we continue to, to perform the test now in, directly in, the, in, uh, in Trapani, and uh, we show that uh, the, um, depending on the approach that we have, uh, depending if it's a new salt works or if it's a, uh, an, uh, refurbishment of salt works, we can increase the productivity up to 78%, or we can address the, the food, footprint uh, um, KPI and reduce it by 43%. The test that uh, uh, will be carried out uh, this year in, uh, in Trapani will be ongoing uh, on, uh, directly on, uh, on, the, on the, the, the Trapani saltworks and uh, by taking the, the real seawater and uh, bitters inside. To conclude the last, um, the, the last word that is uh, related to disintegration, that uh, is, uh, is real success because it is not really, uh, is a global approach. What I mean is uh, an environmental approach and also an economical approach in order to see the, um, the sustainability of all the aspects of this uh, uh, project. I thanks a lot uh, all the, um, the um, the group 
and the, 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 the coordinator at Forsta Data is Andrea, and all the community that work in the Circular Mine uh, project, because uh, we are a very motivated team, <laughs> and this is a very interesting uh, project. Excellent. Thank you very much, Delia. And I would say if you stop sharing your presentation now and the rest of the speakers turn on their camera, also Giacomo, if you can. Um, that was very interesting. So I, I have several questions following that. So we've seen that. So the integration of desalination with saltworks definitely sounds like a very interesting option that should be explored further and probably closer to implementation compared to the first part of the work. So recovering viable minerals from the bitterns is very, very interesting, but maybe several technologies need to still be optimized and developed. Integration of desalination with solar salt works could indeed be applied immediately if someone is interested to take action today. It's for Delia and for Giacomo, I guess, the question, or for anyone. Uh, if I can start to answer, uh, the integration uh, was, uh, was proven by Giacomo with a, a rentability of 30%. We perform this theoretical model, but I insist on the fact that uh, we take also data from the existing plant and we work with Giacomo to, to perform this, this job. Uh, and uh, with, the, with the resources, we identify that we have a re real potential improvement that is huge. And this, uh, our, um, our um, uh, objective is uh, to, to work further in the economical model and to, to start the first <laughs> implementation with the reverse osmosis. And, uh, of course, with this model of uh, water that change because uh, we, we produce water and we produce critical solar materials and we improve the saltworks uh, uh, performances. So, um, yes, if I, can, if, I, if I can add something, I think that uh, what Delia has been showing is very, is very interesting. We have been discussing about that. And I think that the deserves uh, for the really further implementation and the further test to, to be sure. And uh, we as uh, SOSALT are completely uh, available and, uh, and would like to, 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 to go further into this, uh, into this argument. But more, even more, I would say that uh, since we have the ideal situation of an old or a former uh, desalination plant uh, uh, in the area, very close to the south, that we have a, 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 a pipeline for feeding this, the, 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 the area where the, the, the old the desalination plant was installed, all, uh, which is still working and, and available. I think that this is really the ideal place where a, a, a much a, a larger scale experiment and larger scale uh, development can be done. And I think to, to do this will be very, very important to have a connection with the, with the, with the local authorities, and with, the, with the commune and region, because the water is really a public resource and has to be, and has to stay as a, as a totally public, uh, uh, resource. So I think that we are on our we our part is uh, is completely ready to go further and to maybe if possible uh, uh, restart the a new desalination plant in the area. And when we look forward to do this together with the uh, municipality and the, the of Trapani and the the, the and the regional government of Sicily. That, that's very interesting, Giacomo, because you point to the topic that what we've explored before, what you have explored before, and what Delia or Suez analyzed now in, in detail, is the technical side of things. So it can work. The salt is of good quality. Productivity goes up. 
financially it can make sense and environmentally very positive impact. So what we see then from what you described is the fact that, okay, we're talking now to saltworks mostly, but saltworks don't have the option to build a desalination plant integrated with their activities and sell water to the community because of regulatory issues. So we should look at the regulatory issues more carefully, but these are not necessarily the same everywhere. So I don't know, Delia, you as Suez active in the desalination market, do you think there is the option of private building or it should always come with a municipality to work together, municipalities with salt works, with a contractor to build, to make this happen? So do you see also the regulatory side of it as a, as a thing to be further explored and not so simple? Yes, this is an aspect that is really important, Michael. Uh, but at the same time, uh, is uh, is an application and the model that uh, can be different case by case, because in Trapani we see that uh, we face scarcity of water and we face also the the the, the possibility to implement the desalination uh, because we have already the the intake structure that is available and uh, we don't have uh, the approach of uh, the, the regulation is is reduced in this uh, in this example but uh, we can have uh, other area where uh, um, if uh, the the context uh, is uh, uh, is critical and uh, the only resource of water is the desaline, is the seawater the regulation can be, um, uh, we can find, I think, so the, the solution to implement the desalination because is, it will be more and more urgent for the coming years. I don't know if I answer to the, to the question. You know, that is fine. We, we got also now a question from Hicham that uh, he's asking, we have looked at this issue now from the point of view of the solar, uh, of the solar salt works, so of the production of salt and how this is beneficial and makes sense from their point of view. But if you turn around and you look at the issue from the side of the desalination plant, for this as a solution for brine discharge, what he's saying is that, is it true that you really solve the issue or are you just taking once a year some of the brine, put it into the salt works, but most of the brine still goes directly to the sea? You cannot really absorb all the brine. It's a seasonal process. The solar salt works, I guess, is what he says, while the generation of water, production of water from the desalination plant is a, a year round activity. Any comment on that? Because this is a, mitiga is a, is a mitig mitigation for Trapani. Uh, in because uh, we don't use uh, the full capacity of brine uh, during all the year, but the calculation was performed uh, were performed uh, to take uh, the capacity of brine uh, that will match with the max the, with the size of the pounds in the in the trapani and in order to optimize uh, the the production. If we have other context, maybe in, in the North Africa area for the, the, the salt works, they, they, the salt works are operated uh, on continuous all the year. It means that the brine will be managed during all of the year because uh, the evaporation factor is, is not the same than, uh, than in, the, in, the, in the Trapani area. But anyway, in all the cases, the brine is not an issue. This is, is mitigate because we can valorize it, but uh, is the brine is always rejected into the sea thanks uh, to specific uh, diffuser that uh, will reduce the, the salinity impact uh, during the distribution in, uh, in the, in the seawater. This okay. in terms of environmental impact uh, doesn't represent uh, an issue. But the, the, the strong point on the model for me is to consider the brine not like a waste to, to evacuate into the seawater, but we will valorize it into the salt works and up 
it continues to, to go at the end of the, the model when it could be matched with also the salinity gradient technology to produce uh, energy. It's a very global approach. Okay, so I, I, I do see that the issue of, of grind uh, used by the salination plants is, is uh, debated here now also in the discussion on the how much can be absorbed by the solar salt works. I think it is a, also a little bit a point of view, what comes first. If we go to a location like the one we've been looking at, the Trapani, where traditionally before uh, thousands of years, actually, we have salt production, and then you go to add the desalination plant is one way of looking at it and how much can be absorbed. But what we've been hearing a lot from other projects and commercial activities also go to existing desalination plants or new desalination plants where salt production is not taking activity. So your same calculations almost you could use for this purpose and produce salt there. So one way or another, a lot of additional salt will come to the market. And I think this brings back to the initial point of Fabrizio, where he pointed out that if you take all, even with today's desalination brines, if you take all these brines and extract from it the sodium chloride, you, have, you, you, you will increase by two, three, four times the total sodium chloride production in the market. And I would say this is, I don't know if you can call it sea salt in that case, if you start by desalination, I, I would say this will become a hot topic if, if it increases a lot. But uh, Giacomo, wh what do you think about, you know, it's nice to say that your productivity could increase by 40 or 80%, but what will you do with all this additional salt? Do you think you will find markets for it? It's, you're muted still. Uh, yes, I think I, I've been answering in the meantime to two uh, remarks made by, by other uh, colleagues, other people. And uh, uh, yes, in fact, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the salt production uh, all over the world is a, a rather mature uh, uh, quantity. The quantity is increasing, but to a very, a very uh, small amount per year. And we have a very uh, uh, different uh, uh, situation between the so-called developed countries and the uh, developing countries, in the sense that, uh, for for example, as far as the as the uh, food grade salt is concerned, we are uh, we are using too much salt in the so-called developed areas. We, we, the, 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 the pro capita consumption is at, at the level of 10 grams per person per day, whereas all the health authorities suggest five grams per day per person to be the right, the right amount of salt. But on the contrary, the uh, quantity of salt Con, the quantity consumption in the developing countries, I mean the, the equatorial uh, slice of our planet, is uh, below 2.5 uh, gram per day per person. So there is a, 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 a demand of salt and the possibility of growing uh, salt consumption in those areas. Uh, and moreover, these are the, the, the most uh, attractive areas, both for uh, uh, building a, a desalination plant, because they, the, the subtropical uh, areas, not the equatorial, but the subtropical areas are normally very arid re regions, so they need fresh water, and they need also salt. So I think that this could be uh, developed mainly in those areas, but also in the southern Mediterranean area where we are, the, 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 arid, the, the aridity is, uh, is a, and the, and the uh, climatic change is uh, an important issue. So I think that uh, for a relatively small uh, salt work, as for example in Trapani we are, 
this is a, 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 a could uh, this could be a very a very important issue also connected to the fact that at the moment we are our production is completely sold out so that we have the possibility we but this is very particular and due to our experience our very old uh, uh, experience in, in sea salt production we 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 have room for 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 growing our own uh, uh, production but in the in mediterranean area or in the developed kind of european area the salt production not only sea salt but salt production in general we remember that sea salt is a minority uh, uh, quantity of, of, of salt, uh, the, the great majority is mine, rock salt or, or vacuum salt. This is a mature uh, market. This, the salt market is rather mature in the in developed countries. Then there are some areas, for example, we are, we have, our, our production is completely sold out every year and we still need to, to grow, to, to serve our, our, our customers. Excellent. Thank you very much, Giacomo. Um, so by increasing the productivity by 40 or by 80%, Fabrizio, does, does this mean that also the numbers you showed us initially of how much you could take out of the bittern from saltworks in terms of magnesium or lithium or gallium, would that also increase by equivalent amount? Then? Let's not say an equivalent amount since uh, we can extract more sodium chloride, but probably uh, it doesn't mean directly that we can dub double our uh, productivity of trace elements and rare elements. Uh, I would say that it will increase, of course, uh, but that uh, has to be analyzed in case-by-case -case scenarios. And if I may, I'd like to go back to something that Giacomo mentioned about uh, the increasing desertifications that we see rising in our regions in the South Mediterranean uh, part uh, of Europe. And uh, we should prepare now to climate adaptation instead of uh, trying still to mitigate climate change. This is a, uh, not topic nowadays. Uh, adaptation to climate change means also that we start thinking about the future of uh, freshwater supply. And uh, the scheme that we propose here uh, might be a real practical uh, implementation of this kind uh, of adaptation to the climate change. And of course, it brings value within, which is the increased uh, availability of uh, critical raw materials. Great. And as we will be closing the event in two minutes, Andrea, uh, you as the coordinator, maybe, maybe I would ask now everyone, if you feel like it, no. even if we do record the event, if you want to turn on your cameras or the participants, because we'll be waving goodbye soon, but anyone who's still there and is interested, you can turn on your cameras. So Andrea, any final comments from your side, if you want as a the coordinator? Yeah, no, I, I would like to, Thank you, first of all, for all the attendance. And um, yeah, I think we, we have provided a, a nice overview of the of some of the activities of the project. Uh, as you as you have seen, we have not given details on the technical aspects of the technology development, uh, but these will be presented in uh, specific events, in conferences, as they are you know more related to uh, specific. Uh, technological fields, but we are planning to organize uh, another brokerage event in the second phase of the project, in which we will likely uh, present uh, in, in more details the um, advances and the achievements that we have obtained also uh, with respect to the technologies that we are developing. Said that, I would like to thank you all again and thanks uh, to all the speakers and all those who have contributed to the discussion. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you soon in some other future event. So thank you all. And uh, it was great having you. 
The project is only halfway through, so stay connected to the website, the social media of the project. We will be publishing our results and we'll have uh, other events in the future as well. We will be at the European Desalination uh, Society Conference in Gran Canaria in, at the end of June, 20 to 23rd of June. Maybe we'll see some of you there. And yeah, have a nice afternoon and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Congratulations for the talks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.